Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Today, I want to talk about having a two-strike approach. I think it's very important to have some type of approach when you get to two strikes. And it's got to be different than the approach you have when you're ahead in the count or before you get the two strikes. Now, it depends a little bit on the level that you're playing at. You know, we have some really young players, maybe at 10U, 11U, even 12U sometimes, where the pitching isn't good enough. And so some players just don't have an approach and it doesn't really matter. They can just sit fastball every time. They can just try to hammer fastballs. Pitcher can't really change speed, can't mix it up. And so depending on your level, will depend on how much of a two-strike approach you need to have. But I will say, without a doubt, as you get older, you need a two-strike approach. If you want to play at a high level, you have to have a two-strike approach. You cannot just go up there with no strikes, one strike, or two strikes on you and, and think the same thing and have the same approach, or else you won't play at a very high level, especially as the pitching gets better, okay? So let's talk about a simple two-strike approach that you can have. And the first thing I want you to do I ask our players this all the time. What is your two-strike approach, right? So think about it. Do you have one? Do you, do, you, do you change anything, right? I will say that having an approach, a two-strike approach, even if it's not a great one, is better than having no approach at all. So think about that. What's my approach, okay? Now, I want to tell you, uh, I'll give you a suggestion on what I think you should start with with two strikes, okay? And again, some of this can be changed, right, depending on the pitch you're facing, the type of, of hitter that you are, the game situation, all that stuff. But again, this is a basic two-strike approach that I think will help you. I know will help you, especially if you do not have an approach right now. Okay, so let's, let's before we talk about two-strike approach, let's talk about non-two-strike approaches, right? And what are most hitters doing when they're, when they're not in two strikes? Typically, the hitter is looking for their pitch, right? They're anticipating their pitch, typically going to be a fastball, right? Um, and so they're looking for their pitch and they're looking to drive it. They're gonna be aggressive to that pitch, right? And I heard, I heard Dante Bichette talk about this in one video and I thought it was a really interesting video. He talked about, you know, when you're ahead in the count and when you're not two strikes, you've earned the right to be able to work out front. And so that's what happens with a lot of hitters, right? There's less than two strikes. Let's say you're, you're ahead in the count, right? You're looking to drive something. You're looking to get your bat head out in front here so I can drive a ball to the pull side, hit a home run or a double, okay? And so because you're ahead in the count, you've earned the right to look for something out front and look to get your barrel on the ball and drive that thing. Well, when you get to two strikes, you have to give up a little bit of something, right? You can't continue to try to work out here. If you do and the pitcher throws you anything but a fastball, you're probably out, okay? And so I've always said, in order to get something, you have to give something. And when you get to two strikes, you've got to give something up. Just like Dante said, I can't just continue to do what I want to do and work out here. I've got to back the ball up. I've got to give the pitcher something, right? He's gotten the two strikes on me. So I give him something. And what am I going to give him? That's what we're going to talk about right now. So I think the first thing that you want to do when you get the two strikes is one, you can continue to look for the fastball, okay? This is one mistake I see a lot of young kids make, or a lot of players make, is that they automatically go to the curveball, right? So they go, oh, two strikes, probably gonna get a curveball, gotta sit on the curveball. But what happens, especially if you're facing a good pitcher, if you completely sell out on a curveball or an off-speed pitch, and they throw you a hard fastball, you're out right? It's very hard to sit breaking ball and then adjust to a fastball. It's going to blow the ball by you, okay? You're going to get your bat broken or you're going to swing by the time the ball's already in the catcher's mitt, right? So I do not suggest sitting breaking ball. What I do suggest is you continue to stay on the fastball, but you change your approach of where you're trying to drive it. And so what I do when I get the two strikes is I'm a right-handed hitter. I think about hitting the fastball to right center field. All right, I think about hitting it right through the second baseman. If I'm a lefty, I think about hitting a fastball through the shortstop to left center field, okay? So what does that do for me? Well, first it allows me to back the ball up. Again, think about Dante Bichette saying that you've earned the right to work out front when you have less than two strikes or when you're ahead in the count. Well, now when we have two strikes, we've got to back the ball up, right? So it allows me to see the ball longer, to see the ball deeper. And when I hit the ball deeper, right, let's move this ball back here. Let's say we're going to look to drive that ball right here, okay? So we're going to let the ball get deep. That might be a little bit too deep, but I, for the example, I want you to think, we're going to let that ball travel more, okay? So we're not going to, we're no longer trying to hit the ball out here. We're going to let the ball travel. What does that do? Well, in order for me to hit that ball deep, that's the shortest path for me to get to, right? Boom, I can hit that ball deep. If I wanna hit the ball out front, it's gonna take longer, right? My barrel's gotta get way out here. So now, because I've allowed the ball to get deep, and this is the shortest path 
for me to get to. I can see the ball longer, right? I can see the ball travel. I don't have to make a decision as early. And when I see the ball travel longer, I have more time, which then allows me first to adjust on other pitches, right? So I see the fastball as deep as possible, and I make contact deep, and I think about driving the ball to the opposite field. Now, what happens if I get something slower? I get a curveball, I get a changeup, I get a slider. Well, if I'm thinking about hitting the fastball deep, and now I get something slower, let's say it's a breaking ball, I can still hit that ball out front, right? Because that ball is slower, about 10 miles an hour slower, 10, 12 miles an hour, depends on the pitcher, right? So I can hit the fastball deep, but then hit the breaking ball or off-speed pitch out front. So I can hit the fastball to the opposite field, and I can pull the off-speed pitch or the curveball. So now that has allowed me to stay on multiple pitches, okay? Now think about it again. Let's say that I don't do that. Let's say that I don't give in and I continue to want to work out front. I want to hit that fastball, right? Say I want to hit that fastball out here still. Well, if I want to hit that fastball out here, I've got to get things ready, right? I'm anticipating that fastball and I want to hit it out there, especially if I'm playing a level where the pitcher throws pretty hard. I've got to get going to get it out there. Well, what happens when I think, get the bat head out there so I can pull it and it's not a fastball, right? So if I'm trying to hit the fastball here and it's not a fastball, let's say it's a curveball or changeup, well, I'm already gone because that pitch and that changeup or that curveball is probably somewhere still out there, right? And so I have no chance to hit that. And so if I'm thinking fastball, get the head out and catch this thing out front, and I get a breaking ball or a changeup, I'm out pretty much every single time, right? Now, if I've only got one strike on me or no strikes, well then again, I can think get the ball out front, hit the ball out front. Because if I go to hit that ball out front, and I, I, you know, I'm attacking fastball, I go to attack fastball and I go, oh wait, that's a curveball. Oh, I can just slam on the brakes. And it doesn't matter. Let's say it's a curveball for a strike. Oh well, now I got one strike on me right? But if I do that with two strikes, I'm out. So I'm not giving myself a chance to hit and I'm not giving myself a chance to battle and I'm not giving myself a chance to be a tough out, right? You've got to grind when you get two strikes. You've got to be a tough out. You've got to battle. And so the best way to do that for me again is to back the ball up, look for a fastball, get on the fastball, but allow the ball to travel. Think about driving the ball the other way. It gives me a chance to hit a fastball. It gives me a chance to hit something off speed. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. And again, I know if you have this approach, it's gonna give you a shot. There's a lot of other things that can go into it, right? Depending on the pitcher and the hitter and all that stuff. But this right here is something basic that will give you a chance. We'll talk to you later. If you've enjoyed this video and wanna learn more about building the elite swing, check out our new course. We have over two hours of content, almost 30 hitting drills, we break down the exact mechanics that you're gonna to wanna to implement into your swing. I've put the link in the description if you wanna go check it out.